Life Lessons with Juvie, episode 20. 20. 2 oh, 2 oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that was, whatever. Either way, I'm your host, Juvie the Kid. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm just psyched. It's really because of all the people's support whenever. We're at episode 20 now. So it's really it fucking shouts to everybody that's liked, subscribed, shared the videos, anything, feedback, it's dope. Um, I appreciate it all. I'm actually going to raise my chair a little bit here. Bam, bam, bam. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll get right into it. Uh, oh, if you want to submit topics, you can go to my Twitter or my Instagram at JuvieTheKid, J-U-V-Y-T-H-A-K-I-D. Uh, all the regular viewers know it, but in case you're just tuning in. Uh, so Amanda underscore Baxdime970, more of your book, hashtag one bad day. And a lot of you guys agreed. So I will give you guys another preview at some point. You know me, I don't really schedule it. I just drop it as a surprise or whatever. So I will give you guys another little preview of the book. Um, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, I'm writing a horror book from the point of view of a killer. He's a very intense, very curious type character. So, uh, if you want to check out a little preview of that for yourself, you can go to, I believe it's last vlog of 2015 slash one bad day preview, a uh, little audio clip there for you, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> there will be more coming, uh, well, there will be another one coming for now, um, not in this video, so don't get excited people, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes, uh, I have an idea of what I want to do with it too, because I do actually, I want to get it printed up and everything. Uh, so we'll see how it all goes. Um, I like that all you guys are excited for it and uh, anticipating more. That shows me, you know, that you guys are really on board with it and you want to check it out or whatever, you know what I mean? It, it means a lot. So uh, we'll also go to Hamilfet, who has a bit of a related one. I agree with Amanda. But what was your arc, the most defining moment in your life that made you, you? After your book, I would love to see you do a movie script about your life. Like I said, you have a story to tell and we want to see it, hear it, and feel it. Mad thank you to you, brother. Um, I don't know. I guess if I had to think off the top of my head, uh, what made me? Hmm. Shit. I don't know. I'm still kind of figuring out who I am. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not figuring out who I am. Just figuring out how to conduct myself in the person that I see myself being and who I want to be type thing. But uh, I don't know. I, I think some of my most defining moments, because it's been a, a culmination of tons of kind of different shit... I think uh, my most defining moments have been some of the hardest times that I went through. Uh, I don't know, there's certain things in this world that people don't understand, you know what I mean? Uh, when you, if you're involved with certain things and, you know, you, you, that, whether it's drugs or whatever, and you kind of overdose and you kind of get to step into that other side of what we don't see when we're alive and when we're just living all this, we see that darkness that you can reside in and other things can reside in and it's just dark and you know it teaches you a lot about yourself it teaches you a lot about certain things around us uh my kids were defining moments for me for sure because I realized that like you know there are there's a different type of love in this world that exists and it's unconditional and it's crazy whatever but uh yeah I guess my most defining moments have been like my kids being born obviously um, but like a lot of the like hardships that I went through and you know, the times I kind of died and like was just very conscient, very conscious in this very, very dark place or whatever. Uh, certain other things are from just certain experiences that I took with, uh, mushrooms because I do believe that psilocybin is, uh, kind of gets us more in touch with the universe in a way, if we can, if you use it in a mindful experience and that's how you're trying to, you know, you're learning more about yourself and the universe, uh, that's, th those experiences have taught me a lot as well. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, I guess just being, going through a lot of crazy shit where you see the other side of life and kind of doing other different things that'll 
uh, help you express your creativity and also kind of feel more in tune with like the universe and the celestial souls that surround us. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, after the book, you want to see a movie script about my life. Well, I don't really know how interesting of a movie that would be. And I don't know if uh, Terry Crews would be down to play me. Because, uh, I don't know. He has to be. He, he's the only one that could play me. We're like exact twins. Terry Crews, get at me. <laughs> oh, wrong button. Okay. So, another one from a couple of you guys. Amanda underscore Backstime 970. How to prevent relapsing down the rabbit hole. This is a really, 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 really easy answer. You just, some people might not like it or they might be like, well, it's not that fucking easy, bro. Change your friends, change your habits completely. If you realize, oh, when I go to bars or whatever, I try to only have a couple drinks, but I always end up getting smashed or whatever, something happens. Well, stop going to bars. I, don't use the fucking excuse, it's my friend's birthday, they dragged me there. That's fucking bullshit, alright? You're a grown ass, you're a grown ass woman, whatever. Don't go to the fucking bars. Uh, if you see every time you're around certain people, they're the ones using with you and or trying to like get you to get get it for them or whatever, cut it out of your fucking life. Because here's the thing: if you, if anybody going through addiction or anything, my heart goes out to you because I, I I've been there uh, many times. I, I've gone to rehab and detox many times. It fucking it's a horrible thing to go through. So my heart does go out to you. But if you have the the con the the conscious thought to know that what you're doing is kind of hurting you or whatever and you want to get sober i understand that addict voice is very very fucking loud but you need to be louder and you got to find people that are going to help you be louder than the addict voice you know what i mean uh if you don't want to relapse happens relapse does happen it's it, you don't feel shame in it don't feel you know you failed or anything that it, it it's part of quote, sobriety, quote unquote. But uh, it's all it all depends. You got if you do not want to relapse or anything, and you want to take a lot of certain like steps, you got to change the people who are around you and change the people you're fucking talking to. Because honestly, if it's if they're toxic and they're not helping you progress in certain in your life and in your sobriety or whatever you're pursuing, then they're not worth it. Cut them the fuck out. No excuses. I don't give a fuck what CD they have of yours. I don't give a fuck what sweater they have of yours. You can buy another one. Fuck it. Cut them out. Easy as that. Your habits. Habits are fucking harder to change. I understand that. But stop going to fucking bars. Stop. Uh, if, you, if you notice that when you're getting frustrated or whatever right away, you're just going for a drink or something... Start trying to substitute that. Instead of getting mad and going for a drink, get mad and go for a jog. Or get mad and go for a walk. Or try and draw something or whatever. Just try and substitute it. But you have to change your habits and you got to change the people who are around you. Give a fuck less about the history you guys got. Or what they fucking have of yours or whatever have you. Just fucking change your shit. If you do not want to relapse, if you... or I shouldn't be so like hard like if you don't want to relapse... Because it might happen. You might get stressed. You might have a few drinks. and But don't be hard on yourself about that. But if it's harder drugs or whatever, whatever it might be, if you want to take extra precautions not to relapse, change your people, change your habits. That's it. Hamil Fett, another one. Hamil Fett. Who was your absolute biggest influence in your life and how you use those teachings in your everyday life? Man, it's another thing. Like, uh... I've, it's kind of a lot of people have been really big influences to me and I kind of try and te use those teachings in my everyday life uh, but my nan right away uh, my grandma on my mom's side my nan I always called her nan or nanny but uh, yeah I, she right away I'd have to put her at the forefront maybe uh, she's she was one of the most beautiful people ever I ever had the pleasure and honor of being around and getting to be a part of her life and she she showed me so much she gave me the pride of like this the scottish in me um yeah just my nan i love you nan uh she passed away unfortunately but she's still with us like surrounding us whatever how depends on what you believe i guess i don't want to 
offend anyone. Well, I actually don't give a fuck, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love you, Nan. Uh, fucking, I don't know. You're great. Um, I miss you. Everybody misses you, and I'm sure if any of these people got a chance to meet you, she, you'd love them too, and they would love you back. So, shouts to my Nan. Lloyd from Canada. What's your favorite boxing match ever? Oh, great fucking question. Oh, uh, real quick, if you haven't checked out Lloyd from Canada on YouTube, check him out right now. All one, well, not right now. Wait till after this video and then go check him out. Uh, but Lloyd from Canada, all one word. Uh, he does, he has a couple of dope sparring videos of him and a buddy. Uh, he shoots Mocha Only's music videos, so you can't hate on that. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, he, he's just a dope person too. He's one of those people that I can't say enough nice things about him, honestly. Uh, but yeah, go check him out on YouTube. Lloyd from Canada. Uh, okay, favorite boxing match ever. Hmm. Probably Arturo Gotti and Mickey Ward. Ooh, their first fight. Pr yeah. Yeah, I'd say their first fight, Gotti and Ward. That's that's one that I could watch all the time, and I I love it. Uh, yeah, Arturo Gotti and Mickey Ward. The trilogy of those fights are amazing, but the first one for me is. That's one I could watch like every week, every day, whatever, and I'm still into it 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Episode 20, people. 21 will be legal next. Well, if you're in the States, Canada, it's 19, so bam. But episode 20, thank you all for tuning in, sharing, liking, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now. The little button is like right there, right down here, I think. Yeah, somewhere down there. But, uh, yeah, click that subscribe. Get notified for every new video I put out, vlog, this episode, anything. Uh, yeah, I know I went, uh, whatever a lot in this episode, but I don't know. I was just really stoked for 20, 20th episode, and uh, it's an exciting thing for all of us to share in. Yes. <laughs> so, so, the quiet kid, freaks, and weirdos, for the love of everybody, Keep being weird. <laughs>